So I met the band members when I was probably 17 or 18 or so, and I was at a local house party and I saw them then. I was playing in another band at the time and they heard about me and saw me play with my band and then they came and kind of recruited me away a couple years, like a year or so later. So the lead singer, his name was Evan Richards. The drummer was Dave Duncan. And the bass player was a guy named John Simon, who we brought in afterward. And then the rhythm guitar player was Duke Fightmaster. True, true name, that's his real name. I think we were a good band to start off with, not great, um, but we got good over time. But what we were really good at at the outset is the drummer, Dave Duncan. He was just one of those really aggressive mover and shaker type kids who even at the age of 19 years old would go out and get us gigs at really good places. So we were able to get gigs at local venues like the Coach House. Um, we'd obviously play a lot of kind of local parties and things like that. And we started to get a name for ourselves and the group of friends that we had liked to run with us a little bit. And then what then happened is as most of our friends started moving away into colleges, a lot of their friends, uh, a lot of our friend group became ingrained in the local fraternity and sorority systems of the various colleges that they were at. So we embarked on, and this was, um, I think I was probably 18 or 19 at the time, we embarked on what we called the GAT, and we called it the Great American Tour. But all it was was really just a trip up the California coast where we were playing different college uh, towns. And so we were playing, you know, some clubs and some parties and stuff like that. LA, Santa Barbara, spent a lot of time in Santa Barbara. Um, I think we did a stop in Berkeley and then ended in Chico and then came back down to Orange County. And then we would go down and play uh, gigs down in San Diego occasionally as well. So that was our first opportunity touring and we did like a little three month tour um, up and down the California coast, super fun. The band was, you know, accompanied by a lot of the things that a lot of, you know, rock bands like to say that they get into. And so there was, you know, a fair amount of alcohol and, um, you know, there was some drug use at the time. Um, but it was never anything that I was particularly, well, nothing that I was ever really interested in. Um, and I saw the other bandmates go, go down some paths that were pretty dark eventually. And it was mainly with alcohol at the time. Um, you know, drug use was mainly like, you know, some of the guys were smoking pot and things like that, but n there weren't any heavy drugs at the time. Um, and when those eventually did start to rear their heads, that's when things, you know, started to go sideways with the band. Yeah, so, you know, as that path of addiction started to, you know, you know affect some of the members of the band, it, we had some pretty dark moments and it got to the point where um, our lead singer in particular, uh, he did start to delve into some of the harder drugs, um, not around me or that I really saw, but that started to kind of happen. And so uh, we ended up having to kick him out of the band. The band shifted quite a bit after that. Um, and then for me, you know, even though we still continued success and things were going well, this is right after we cut our album, by the way, when we, we kicked him out of the band and we were about to go tour to kind of pay off the debt that we had incurred to cut the album. And, uh, you know, we were going on tour and getting ready to kind of go promote the album, if you will. And we were at that point in time, even though we didn't have Evan, musically, we were at the kind of height of our powers. The band was super tight, the show was tight. The songs kind of had like a nice sequence to them. Like it wasn't just like us getting up and playing a bunch of songs, it was actually a show. And so the band was kind of at the height of its musical prowess at the time, which was great. And I was really enjoying that. But at the same time, I started to see the effects of addiction take hold. So as I saw some of the other bandmates descend into, you know, basically alcoholism, that 
you know, made me see a lot of dark sides to both them as well as me and our relationships and the way the band was headed. And so I started to realize, like, wait a second, even if we are successful on this path, what we're going to be as I look down further on that path is not what I personally feel is successful in life. And so I got really um, disillusioned with kind of what we were doing and kind of what I was doing. And at the time, I was like now kind of 20, 21 years old and um, still had all my life in front of me, obviously, but I had dropped out of college to go on tour and I realized that, you know, education is super important to me. Ultimately, a family is going to be super important to me and, you know, what does it mean to be a man? And being a man is not something, in my view, that is all wrapped up in the selfish pursuit of, you know, playing rock music and getting the adulation of people and having people tell you how cool you are all the time and getting a following. Um, to me, eventually being a man meant taking on responsibility. And so I had a shift and I was like, well, I need to figure out how do I get out of this band? Because this was, it wasn't just something we were doing on the side for fun. It was how we were all making our money. It was, you know, everyone's livelihood and they were all depending on me. I was depending on them. And there was, you know, we had a group of like roadies and guys that would come on tour with us and things like that. So. It was a uh, it was a big decision, and so when I told them that, um, I my news when I told them I wanted to quit and be done was the kind of the the first domino that fell that eventually you know toppled over the entire band and ended it. And so you know the epilogue to it is you know I was able to leave the band. Um, you know, the band probably stopped maybe, I don't know, six months to a year after. And I pursued, you know, a mission for my church. I pursued an education, met my wife when I was in college, um, have everything I have today as a result of that decision. So I'm very grateful that that, that fork in the road in, in my life, I made the right decision and I owe everything that I have to that decision. Um, other, other guys in the band weren't as fortunate, uh, so for example, Evan, he was the lead singer. He continued down that path and he got really into like all these really kind of death metal type bands, um, continued, you know, drug, drug abuse, alcoholism, and unfortunately in 2012 he overdosed and died. Two of the other bandmates uh, became alcoholics and um, had to battle through that. The cool thing was um, I served a mission for my church and when I came back, I got to reconnect with them and they were going through, they had gone through the 12 step program in Alcoholics Anonymous and I got to attend a lot of those meetings. And to this day, they're recovering alcoholics and they're doing well, they've got families, they've kind of overcome a lot of the challenges that they had early in life. And so I'm happy to report that they're doing really well. And uh, we've maintained our friendships throughout the years. Um, and then the bass player, John Simon, he's the other one. Um, he was always kind of the most level-headed out of the group. Uh, he and I were kind of the most tight in the, in the height of the band years. And uh, so he never really kind of descended into any of the substance abuse issues that I saw my friends do. Um, along with me, uh, John and I were into it. We were into it for the music. Um, but um, all of us ended up with Great lives, families, everything. Um, it's just tragic that we lost Evan. Um, he's always going to be missed, and he was an immensely talented, good-looking kid. Um, he just left a lot on the table, so it was sad that he passed away. Um, like I said, I think we'll all, we'll all always miss him, but um, grateful that we all overcame the various challenges that we had and landed where we did.